Today on Macaulay Math, we're talking the product and quotient rules for derivatives. Intro. Okay, good day. I'm Professor McCulley. This is Math 200, Calculus 1, lesson number 8 on the quotient and product rule. Our goals for today, we're going to find the derivative of a function using the product rule. We're going to find the derivative of a function using the quotient rule. We're going to find the derivative of the remaining four trigonometric functions, and we're going to find higher order derivatives. Not all functions are easily derived. When two or more functions are combined through a multiplication or division, new rules are needed to evaluate these derivatives. The product rule and the quotient rule are formulas that can be used to derive increasingly complex functions. Additionally, the quotient rule can be used to derive the tangent and the cotangent functions. Previously, a derivative of a function that had units assigned to the vertical and horizontal axis created a new function that could calculate an instantaneous rate of change with new useful units. A second and third derivative are also rates with potentially useful units. Let's define these rules. We're going to start with the product rule. The product rule says that if you take the derivative of the product of two functions f and g, then the derivative is you leave the first function alone times the derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first times the second left alone. I have a proof of this in the links below if you care to look at it. The quotient rule, it says if you have the derivative of the quotient of two functions, then that quotient derivative is going to be the bottom function left alone times the derivative of the top function minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function all over the bottom function squared. Now, we have a nice mnemonic device to help us with this particular derivative, and it is ho de hi minus hi de ho all over ho ho. And so the way we look at it, if I call this f function the hi function, and I call the bottom function the ho function, and when we say derivative, we have the d of that, then we can say that this is ho d high minus high d ho all over ho ho or the bottom one squared. And that's just an easy way for us to remember that. So an example, let's find the derivative of the tangent function using the quotient rule. And so before we get started with that, let's do a little bit of uh, remembering. Let's recall Let's recall two things. First, let's recall that the tangent of x is equal to the sine of x over the cosine of x. And let's also recall that if we take the derivative with respect to x of sine x, we get cosine x. And if we take the derivative with respect to x of the cosine of x, we get the negative sine of x. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to separate this tangent function into terms of sine and cosine. So we're going to take the derivative with respect to x of sine x over the cosine of x. And now we have a quotient here. So we're going to apply this quotient rule. And again, ho de hi minus hi de ho all over ho ho means that we're going to leave the bottom function alone times the derivative of the top minus the top function left alone times the derivative of the bottom all over the derivative of the bottom squared. All right, so let's do that. So we leave the bottom alone. That's going to be the cosine of x times the derivative of the top. Now remember, the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So we're going to have cosine x times cosine x. And then it'll be minus the top left alone, which will be sine x times the derivative of the bottom and so the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So we'll have negative sine x all over the bottom squared. Ho, ho. So cosine squared x. All right. So at this point, we're going to simplify. 
and cosine times cosine is cosine squared x and then minus a negative is going to be plus it'll be sine squared x all over cosine squared x and so at this point i want to say recall that uh, the Pythagorean identity cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. And so we get 1 over cosine squared x. Now normally I would say that this is okay. But again, we're going to recall that the um, cosecant of x, or going to recall that the secant of x is equal to 1 over the cosine of x. And so since this is cosine squared x, we're going to say that this is the secant squared of x. So a fairly easy application of the quotient rule. And with the quotient rule and the other rules for derivatives of sine and cosine, we can find the other trig derivatives. And we just figured out that the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. By a similar method, you could find out that the derivative of cotangent x is negative cosecant squared x. The derivative of secant x is going to be secant x times the tangent of x. And the derivative of the cosecant of x is going to be negative cosecant of x cotangent of x. Okay, there is some higher order derivatives. And when we say a higher order derivative, that means we're taking the derivative more than one time. And so you can take a first derivative and we've seen all of these bits of notation so far. But the second derivative is going to be y double prime or f double prime of x. And then we have d squared y over dx squared. That's another way to do it. This notation, again, implies that you're going to take the second derivative of f of x. There is a third, fourth, and you could potentially do fifth der derivatives. We're only going to talk about applications of the first and second derivative. So some elementary examples. Find the second derivative of the function. This is a fairly simple function. It is composed of the sum and or difference of a number of monomials. So that first derivative here. We're going to take the derivative of x squared, which we remember we take two and bring it down and then reduce by the two by one. So I'll get x to the first, which I won't write. And then the derivative of negative four x is going to be just negative four. And the derivative of a constant is always dirt. And the derivative of a constant is always going to be zero. Next, we'll take the second derivative and the second derivative process is just going to be the same as the first derivative process, except we're using the first derivative to do it. And so the derivative of 2x is just a constant 2. And the derivative of negative 4, since negative 4 is a constant, it is 0. And we will stick with that right there. All right, moving on. Our next example, we are going to find the derivative of g. And g clearly is a quotient of both a sine function and x to the third. So when I say that we're going to take the derivative of this, we are again going to use the quotient rule. And so g prime will be ho, the bottom function, x to the third, ho d high. So the derivative of sine x, we remember to be from an earlier example to be cosine negative cosine x minus the top function left alone so sine x times the derivative of the bottom function which will be 3x squared all over the bottom function squared but you'll notice here all terms have a factor of at least x squared. So x squared is going to be our greatest common factor of all of these. So in part of our simplification, we're going to cancel out um, x squared from each term. So when I cancel out an x squared here, I'll have just x. So I'll have negative x cosine x. 
And then when I cancel out an x squared here, I'll just have negative 3 sine x. And remember, a power to a power, you multiply. So I'll have x to the sixth on the bottom. But when I cancel out the x squared, that's going to leave me with just x to the fourth. Okay, next example, find the derivative of y. And this one looks like it might be fairly easy, and in generally it is, but the reason I picked that is because most students will look at this and they will miss the fact that right here I have a product. And so here I have to use the product rule on x squared sine x because it's a multiplication of two functions. So the derivative here, and let's go back and review the product rule real quickly. So the derivative of the product of two functions is the first function left alone times the derivative of the second function plus the derivative of the first function times the second function left alone. So here, We'll leave this first function alone. So we've got x squared times the derivative of the second function. So the derivative of sine x is just cosine x plus the derivative of the first function, which would be 2x times the second function left alone, which is just sine x. And then to that, we'll add the derivative of cosine x. And remember, the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So my simplification here is going to be fairly easy. It's just going to be y prime equals x squared cosine x plus 2x sine x minus sine x. All right, finally. Use the function f of x equals x minus 1 over x plus 1 and the point 2 comma 1 third. Use a calculator to find the value of the derivative at x equal to 2. And then find the equation of the tangent line at the given point. All right, so we're going to use a calculator to do that. So let's pull up our decimos. Now, if we were doing this one by hand and... You know, sometimes we have to do this by hand. We would use a quotient rule, clearly, but it wouldn't be too difficult because we have x to the first over and x to the first, so it would be fairly easy. But we want to use the graphing calculator to find the derivative at 2. All right, so depending on what calculator you're using, it will depend on how you actually evaluate the derivative of a function. But for Desmos, if I go um, f of x is equal, equal to the quantity x minus 1 divided by x plus 1. And they want me to find the value of the deri a derivative at a point. Well, that's fairly easy. All I have to do is go f prime of 2, which is what they're asking me to find. And you'll notice that I get this decimal here. And I don't like decimals any more than you do. So what we want to do is we want to click this little tab right here that changes it to a fraction for us and it says that the slope of the tangent line at f equal to 2 will be equal to 2 ninths so if i come over here to 2 and i were to imagine a tangent line right there that doesn't look very steep so up 2 and i go right 9 that looks it could be like it's right and so here for part A, since they say use your calculator to find the value of the derivative at x equals 2, for part A, we will say that f prime of 2 is going to be equal to 2 over 9. Now, it wants us to find the equation of the tangent line at the point. And we've done that a couple times. So let's remember that y minus y1 is going to equal to m times x minus x1. In this case, our y minus y1, our y1 is going to be that value there, and our x1 will be that value there. So I'll go y minus 1 third will equal 2 ninths is the derivative at the point 2, which becomes the slope for this tangent line. And so we'll go 2 over 9 here, and then it will be x minus 2. Okay, so I want to get y by itself. So I'm going to distribute my 9 over 2 first, so I can figure out what common denominator I'm going to have to change this 
one third into. So two ninths times x is two ninths x, and then two ninths times two is going to be four ninths. So I come back over here and I say, all right, how, what do I have to multiply three by to get to ninths? Well, three times three is nine. So one times three is three. I'll have y minus three ninths. So now I need to add that three ninths to both sides. So I'll have y equals two over nine x and then three ninths plus negative four ninths is negative one ninth. And so that is going to be my final answer. And since we have the graphing calculator out already, let's just go ahead and type that in and see if it works. So we will say y equals two divided by nine. We'll put our right arrow key, hit the X button, and then we'll say minus one divided by nine. And we see that right there, we have a good intersection point at two and then 0.3 repeating, which is two one third. So it goes through the point that we're asking for and it is tangent to this given function. So this is a good checked answer. And that's all I got for today, folks. So the Star Wars fun fact of the day, the original opening crawl was created with practical effects. They painted the crawl on a piece of glass and moved the camera over the top. From the prequel saga on, the opening crawl has always been created using computer effects. And it's a fairly easy effect to do. Well, that's all I got for today, folks. Have a good day. Goodbye.